boys. Tell us. Gentlemen. Happy work. Both of you. <laughs> We're all here. And it makes me so happy. Yes. Here's my question. Movies or TV shows? What is your go-to? You got time. I don't I don't care which movie or what TV show. I'm just saying I'm calling it movies or TV shows. What are you going to do? This is so timely based on a lot of things that I've just been thinking about lately. And I'm actually going to talk about soon when I get something off my chest. Um, if I like assuming I have a window of time, right? I'm going movies all day, all day. No doubt about it. I'm going movies. Interesting. I can't wait to hear more about why. Uh, for me, it couldn't be, <laughs> it can't be more obvious for me that it's, it's TV shows. I, I don't know what it is about. A movie to me is a little bit of a gamble where you are committed to, it used to be a minute, an hour 30. Now you're like two to two and a half. And if you don't know going into it, if it's a good movie, you are in a long-term relationship commitment with this movie because I'm not a movie turner offer. I'm like, there's always, there's always hope that this is going to get better. And it's just often just too, just too much for me. I don't know. Sitting still. I need a little break. I need a commercial break. I need like a timeout. I need something like that to just kind of reset, get a beverage, whatever it might be. But Give me, give me shorter term. Give me, give me TV shows. You know, you bring up a good point there just about the commitment. Cause like, depending on the time, it, depending on what's on, I could, I'm cool with that commitment, but like, yeah, it's TV shows for me. And the reason I thought about this is because I really enjoy watching TV shows with my kids. I don't like watching movies. Like, I don't like, because Disney movies in particular, I don't like them. Like, I don't. I'm not a fan of them. Like, as an adult, like, as a kid, I guess I like them. But then I'm, like, looking at them, like, do I even really remember this? Like, this isn't good. I don't really enjoy it. But TV shows, I'm into. Because it's, like, 20 minutes here, 15 minutes here. And it's, like, kind of current. The music's, like, somewhat better. It's just, like, I like TV shows, I think more, but that's why I brought that up to you guys. Big Coco Melon probably. fan over in your neck of the woods. That's really driving that home. Coco Melon. <laughs> you said music was current. You said short. I'm like, check, check, check. Coco Melon. <laughs> Coco Melon is terrible. Get away. Just wait for Coco Melon the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be all that's into the best that. Worlds. <laughs> God. I think, uh, so to your point, Didi, like, that's why I said, if I have the available window of time, because to be quite honest with you, I, I can't tell you the last time I've sat down. I think the last time I sat down and watched a movie from start to finish was when we did Die Hard on this podcast. And that was like <laughs> Christmas last year. Mm -hmm. That's the last time I think I've, I've watched a movie start to finish. And it's only because you guys gave me homework. So like I <laughs> rarely have that amount of time, which is a difficulty, which means I certainly watch more TV than movies. Yeah. Well, I just wanted mm -hmm. to bring that up, guys. TVs yeah. or movies. What do you guys think? Hit us up at Brunch Breakdown. This is the Brunch Breakdown. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, I'm Didi out here in Los Angeles. Chris and Dan are in Pittsburgh. And today on the show, we've got an awesome pick two with a bunch of food pairings that Dan is going to tell us why he picked that. And there has been this tweet that has been going super viral. And a lot of people are really crushing this random guy on the internet for just saying how he feels about chain restaurants. We're going to talk about it too. And maybe we're going to crush the guy too, because, you know, why not the internet? And uh, we got music, we got beer, we got a lot more. And Dan, let everybody know where they can find us. Of course, you can find a brunch breakdown anywhere you listen to podcasts. It's quite that's it's, it's quite literally that simple. Anywhere you can listen to podcasts, you will find the brunch breakdown. We've got new episodes each and every week, every single Wednesday. Make sure you're hitting subscribe and hitting follow so those episodes come to you as soon as they become available. Uh, full video episodes as well. Uh, are available on our YouTube and our Facebook pages. Those premiere at noon Eastern. 
9 a.m. Pacific, of course, on demand anytime you want to watch those as well. Wherever you are on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Triller, TikTok, whatever, at Brunch Breakdown. Follow us there. We follow you back. Let's be friends, people. We're friends. We're all here. It's one big brunch table. Come on, join us. And of course, don't forget the double stuffed, double stacked, twice as good Sounds of Brunch playlist exclusively on Spotify. It gets updated, updated every Friday. We have the week prior and the current week, all the playlists, all the songs of what we're listening to that week. So check it out. Beautiful. Well, Chris, you weren't here last week, so get it off your chest. Let's go. Um. Okay. So the reason I said this movies and TV topic is kind of top of mind is because I've just been like, so, so I was pretty damn sick last week and a half or so. Um, and I was just like completely off the grid, just completely off the grid. Wasn't checking, wasn't posting, wasn't doing really anything on the internet. And um, it was weird because when I took that time off, it's not like I set it up, right? It just happened. And then I came back to social media and went back on the platforms that I'm on all the time. And like, I just had this overwhelming distaste for everything that like is, is out there these days. And I'm sure you guys have noticed it now too, like never like this before has content been pushed onto your feeds that you don't follow, that you did not elect to see. And it's, it's like Twitter used to be the last bastion of, of, of like, hey, see what you want. And now that, like, now I'm getting videos on Twitter constantly of like just the stupidest shit that's like unintelligent and, and doesn't um, have any substance to it. Like how many times, how many videos does Twitter need to show me of people like kicking the shit out of each other? I did, like, it's not, I didn't ask for that. And of course I pause when I see somebody getting punched in the face because that's what anybody does when they see somebody get punched in the face. But then because Twitter can tell that I paused on my timeline, it thinks I want to see more people getting punched in the face, which I don't, I think it's despicable. And so like the movies TV thing to me was kind of like, I don't know. I, I feel like it kind of, uh, it's like the albums thing for me too. I feel like, like just in general, like with all of the media and the content and the things that we consume, our attention spans and our ability to like sink into a topic or like even just generally be bored is non-existent. And I just think it's really unhealthy. <laughs> I don't think that this is good for anybody. Um, and like, I'm, I'm even thinking it about the content that, that I post and create, like I, um, I almost kind of purposely, I know that like, if you can hack the algorithm, if you do like a 15 second clip where you're doing something and you're having this song in the background, I kind of purposely don't do that. And I actually try to push the limits on how long the videos are that I can upload just because I think like, I don't, I don't want to necessarily be constantly interacting with people who don't have the attention span to listen to me talk about something for like, 55 seconds. Like if you can't do that, that's a problem. And <laughs> I just noticed when I came back onto the social media platforms after literally being off of them for an entire week and a half, just seeing all this crap, man. And I just don't, I just don't like where it's going. Um, obviously don't have a solution. Cause like we're all playing ball on those platforms, playgrounds, like it's, they make the rules. There's nothing we can do about it. Um, but I just don't think it's good for people. I don't think it's good for people's mental health or well-being. And that's all. It was just like, it was just so weird to take that time off and then come back. And I feel like when you take the time off and come back, it, it almost like helps you see more clearly what the hell's happening. And it was a little bit discouraging. Yeah, it, we brought this point up whenever this movie came out, oddly enough, a movie, and we were just tying it all together. On Netflix, Chris is the social dilemma. Mm. Uh, really, like dives and hacks into that idea. And if you haven't seen it yet, we can't urge you enough to follow us on, on social media at Brunch Break Up, and then go watch this movie. Uh, <laughs> please do it in that order. Uh, um, 
but it really is a eye opening. It's really, really fascinating, really, really eye opening. And yeah, like I'm scrolling through Twitter today and I don't know how, within the span of maybe four swipes, four swipes of the thumb. I saw the same video of a fan at the Bengals game puking in her own lap. His I saw or her that own one lap. too. Yeah. yeah. I'm like from in three of them from people I don't follow. And I'm like, this, I don't need. I'll see myself out. Thank you yeah. very much. So yeah, it's just gotten, it's got way, way out of hand and it's a, uh, it's a mess to navigate if you even try. Yeah. I, I mean, I agree with everything you guys are saying, cause I hate it so much now because just because I follow one person doesn't mean I want to follow these people. Mm -hmm. I don't know why that is a part of the algorithm. It's like, okay, I follow house of highlights, right? Everyone who likes sports fo basically follows House of Highlights, right? And that doesn't mean I want to follow every other page that's doing what House of Highlights does. Right. Like, because I stopped on this one basketball video doesn't mean I want to follow every basketball account in the world. No, no, I just like Josiah because he's really funny. These other people aren't that funny. I don't care. You know what I mean? It's like, or because I watch, like, I'll watch like three of Chris's videos like in a row or something. And then all of a sudden, all the fitness content is coming <laughs> to my thing. And I'm like, I don't want them. I like Chris Gates. I don't want them. Like, it's the most annoying thing. And, my, and Siobhan talks about this all the time too. This is like, before uh, we had Mayhem, she was constantly just like talking about, um, she was like looking up, you know, different things like about mom stuff or whatever and like baby shit and toys or whatever. And all of a sudden, her TikTok started getting flooded with like sad mom videos about like miscarriages and shit. Yeah. And it was like, she was like, I had to delete TikTok because all of a sudden for whatever reason, they thought because I was looking up stuff about bassinets that I wanted to hear everything that was sad about mom shit. And they're like, and she's like, this is terrible. And it's like, that's what's happening now on social media. And I'm like, I don't, I don't like it. I, I don't like that. You don't know who I like, stop it. Yeah. You yeah. don't know me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just don't think it's good. And I think like eventually people are going to get sick of it and things will change. But like in the interim, it's uh, like the concept of, oh, you're interested in this. You might also like this is great on the surface. But like the algorithms need a little bit of work. <laughs> like it, it works for things like it's weird that we're kind of bringing all these topics together, like a streaming service like Netflix or Hulu, where based on your viewing recommend, you know, your viewing here are some things you like, which is great because I can go to that. I can find that category. Can you imagine if you just turned Netflix on and it just started playing one of these things? <laughs> like, we know you what you liked yesterday. Just try this. Get out. Get out. No, just try it. Promise. Just, you gotta wait till it's over. And then we can discuss if you like it. That's what it would be like. It's too much. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, Dan, get it off your chest. <laughs> Um, uh, my is TV related too. This is fascinating how we're tying this all together, uh, unintentionally. Um, so after I just said, I would much rather watch TV shows. One of the issues with watching a TV show and on cable in particular is you got to deal with commercials, right? And if you're watching it live, you're not fast forwarding through any of them. And we've all seen for many, many years now, those medical commercials for those very strange and very specific ailments and conditions right oh my like god please started... tell me you have one no no please, please. promise no <laughs> i feel like this all started like back in the day with like it was like viagra was the first one to like be having all these tv ads everywhere on any channel doesn't matter what time of day and just awkwardly announcing what this is and what this is for and it's just exploded into like every minuscule specific disease and complication that you've never heard of and they all look the same too right it's like you have the couple in the bathtubs right on vacation uh <laughs> or you're out at you out at, out at, uh out to eat at a restaurant with friends and like the complication comes over you and then the spotlight and it's really dark and you gotta you gotta run out of there or you're outside playing with the grandkids and oh no I got the shits. I got to run inside in the <laughs> middle of playing with my grandkids because I have Genslow Manova, you know, and there's no <laughs> cure for this thing. I got to stop in the middle of playing with my grandkids. Like we've all, it's the same shit. 
it's the same shit over and over again. And there's just way, way too many of these things and way too many companies spending a lot of money on TV ads for like a very narrow and specific audience of people that may or may not have this disease that no one has ever heard of. Like, isn't it the job of doctors to recommend these drugs when you have one of these ailments? Isn't that kind of their job? Oh, you have this? Well, we have a couple of options. How about this or this? You don't need the the story of the out to dinner and grandpa in the, you know, bathtubs to wake you up that there's a drug for this thing that you have. That's the doctor's job, right? I don't need to see these. And these are long commercials too. These aren't 15, 30 second spots, right? These are long, dedicated commercials. Um, and we don't need to, and it's just, they're so awkward in so many ways. Um, you know, they list all the weird side effects, right? We don't need to have, they list all the risks. And one of the risks is always, if you're allergic to this drug, don't take it. Like, thank you. Thanks. I'm glad we had to cover that in this very expensive commercial. So let's just let the medical medical professionals do their jobs and let's stop advertising this nonsense on TV. This just recycled garbage, please. And thank you. <laughs> I like the ones where like <laughs> people are dancing aggressively because they apparently got the medication and now they can just like while out. Oh, and life is just unbelievable. Yeah. They're just out there in like <laughs> half the amount of clothes they had on before bright lights everywhere. Just woo. Yeah. Life is good. I've seen life people tweet before, like, man, I never knew life with psoriasis could be so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you know why I like those commercials is because <sighs> I didn't know how bad shingles was <laughs> until I watched one of those commercials. I was like, oh my God, that's what shingles does to you. Holy shit. I don't want that. <laughs> that's terrible. Sometimes those commercials really do kind of tell you something. Um, one of the, oh, dude, if you watch any MTV show, you will see the HIV mm. medications. Mm -hmm. And listen, they make <laughs> taking prep for HIV medicine look like it is the most fun time <laughs> you could possibly have. And it it's is- true. It's wild what those commercials look like. It's just a bunch of really good looking people in shape at the gym, at yoga, going to the movies. They're all doing shit you yep. want to do in blank city, name whatever city it is. It could be Pittsburgh. It could be LA. It could be any place possible. And it's just where are the people are at. And it just looks like so much fun. And then it's just like all these things talking about HIV underneath what looks like the best time ever. Yeah. Everybody's carrying <laughs> yoga mats, drinking oak, like <laughs> drinking and oat milk dude it's amazing like, like why? yeah i want to step up and prep up let's go this seems <laughs> fun <laughs> oh man and i'm like there's nothing fun about this why right. are those commercials like you know right. there's nothing fun about that like i it's amazing god oh, all right Katie, take it away <laughs> I guess I should have just done it on that commercial. Though. I'll, um, right. <laughs> um, uh, no, uh, I just want to say this one thing. Freaking, I've been in LA for eight years now. Eight years, Labor Day weekend, which is wild to think about. Eight years. Jeez. Yeah, eight years. It's crazy. Um, And I just want to say, freaking, find yourself some yes people. I know there's like a bad connotation to that, like about having yes men and all these people who say yes or whatever. Dude. If everyone doesn't say yes to me, and when I say everyone, I literally mean every person in my life. When I was in Pittsburgh and I was like perfectly fine, had a job, all the things, and I was like, yep, I'm gonna go do this at Radio Disney. I think I'm gonna do it. If somebody would have told me, like if either one of you two would have been like, dude, that's stupid. <laughs> I wouldn't have done it. I was literally looking for people to tell me, no, this is stupid. And no one said that. My parents didn't say that. My girlfriend at the time didn't say that. My old boss didn't say that. No one said that to me. And it ended up being the best thing that's ever happened to me. So find yourself some yes people. And it could work out for you the way it did for me. Because I swear to God, if any of you would have said no, I'd have been like, yep, not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> It was crazy. I was 29 years old. I had a job. I was, had a life. I had my friends and all that stuff. And I was moving across the country to go try to do something. 
and friggin everyone's like yeah you gotta go do it gotta go do it so find yourself some yes people and you'll be better off wow that's that's a that's an incredible chess segment there by you dd i mean that's a great point you're right there's a negative connotation with it but sometimes that one no or the, what, yeah, that one thought sends you in the wrong direction completely that you uh, think is just the safer route. Meanwhile, you know, big opportunity. And look at, look at you now. Look at yeah. you now. I can't believe it's been eight years. Eight. That makes me feel old. I mean, that's <laughs> – jeez. Eight years, one marriage, three kids. You've added, you've added a human being to your life every two years since you've moved to California. Oh God, don't say it like that. So in two <laughs> more years, either you're having another kid or me or Dan is moving in. We talked about you, well, full house, you, fuller house. That's right. <laughs> Uncle Uncle's Dan and Uncle to Chris. <laughs> <laughs> One of you guys are moving in. Yeah, I am. I am making sure that that never happens. I'm I'm moving in because you're going to be too busy filming Cialis commercials because that's your next step. As I know, I can't wait to see you in one of those one day. You're bound for it. You're bound for it. I guarantee it. Can't wait. I'm going to tell you off air how much you make doing those commercials. <laughs> I'll tell you off air. Because it is wild. I will tell you off air. All right, let's get into it. It is bruise day. Uh, I'm going to go first since I'm just talking right now. Um, I'm going to go with Crown and Hops, Black Owned Brewery in Los Angeles. And this is their BPLB, Black and Brown People Like Beer IPA. Nice. And uh, it is pretty awesome. And it's cheers to diversity, inclusion, and racial equity in craft beer. So big shouts to... Uh, uh, Crown and Hops Brewing. They make some really awesome beer, and this is one they have out right now. So um, check it out. And also, it says a product of dopeness is what it is. So I love it. So BPLP, love it. Check it out. Super That's good. Fantastic. I should probably drink this right now because I want to drink it. I don't know why. Yeah, I just, you like, know, put I'm it not going to let you get away with just I'm out of about. shape. I'm out of shape. Yeah. There we go. Come on. We got to get them out the barrel and flow if they haven't been before. I love Dude, it. Dude, I know, right? I know, which I now follow that because I want I want to come to that next Dude, year. Dude, I'm telling you. It looks you. like so much fun. It's the best one without like it's playing, not even close. Yeah, I know I'll be doing all of the I'll be doing the trip around the world next yeah. year, next they summer. Re, they come out with that date pretty early. So as soon as it comes out, let's let's figure that out. Yeah, because I follow nice. them on Instagram now and I'm like, oh my God, this looks like it's so much fun. Not that I didn't believe you, Dan, but yeah. you know, it's nice <laughs> right. to have some proof. <laughs> to see how much fun it actually is but yeah it's like cool. prep so, up you know step up and prep up you just saw it and you're like oh, this is too much fun <laughs> chris what are you stepping on <laughs> <laughs> why do i have to go next why, that's right <laughs> why doesn't dan have to handle that transition you jerk? <laughs> um okay i'll try i um am still i feel like i'm still recovering even though i feel pretty much back to hundred percent. But with that said, about to go on a mini vacation this weekend. So I'm having a hybrid beer today, boys. I think you'll appreciate this one. This is a non-alcoholic beer, but it's from our good friends at Untitled Art Oh, out in, ooh. I think, Wanakee, right? Yeah, uh, mad respect. Right? Yeah, Wanakee, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. This is their uh, non-alcoholic juicy IPA. And honestly, like... This is a really interesting concept to me because I, I, I know I've, I've mentioned this to Dan off air before, like the, the idea of this, if it tastes good and I have not tried it yet, is very appealing to me because I, lo I love IPAs so much that I could get down with having the flavor of an IPA without having the, the like what is commonly 6.5 to 8.5 ABV that totally screws up my sleep at night. You know, like once you get to that time of day when the kids are asleep and you can enjoy something, the worst thing is for that thing that you enjoy to ru ruin the <laughs> night of sleep that you need to have. So uh, I'm excited to try this and it's from uh, a pretty well-respected brewery here. So. Yeah, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. I think that the market is really opening up oh on non-alcoholics. Dude, it is, it's exploded. 
Yeah. Like speaking of ha- first kid to third kid, like my wife enjoys a, a drink, right? The first kid for Sersha, it was just Heineken Zero. That Ooh. was it. The only Rough. thing that was around, right? It was Odul's, Rough. of course, Odul's mm-hmm. the OG and Heineken Zero, only things. Fast forward to Mayhem and I went to BevMo and we were in Palm Springs this summer and it was insane how much, I mean, every wine, every like, everything there's non-alcoholic everything it's wild it's wild but anyways chris how you feel how is it this is really good it's it's uh for a juicy ipa it's more on like the uh like the grapefruit tangerine-ish type of like like a bit more uh bitter citrus fruit which i like like for my ipas i tend to like them on both ends of the spectrum so this is pretty good i I would totally yeah i I would totally have this uh at, at night just to enjoy it and um yeah, this is awesome. I would love to try more. I don't know, like, it's kind of like regional, right? With the craft brewery reason, like who actually does it. But I, I hope more places around here are producing other options because this is really good. Yeah, yeah, that's, it is. It's a market that's really, it really is exploding. And I think it's, I think you might even start to see exclusive breweries that are exclusively non-alcoholic. I think that's in the future. We may not be there today, tomorrow, but I think that could be very well become a thing um so an untitled art can never go wrong can never go wrong um there's non-alcoholic bars in los angeles i know that doesn't mean they will be everywhere tomorrow like dan just said but like it's something that is coming Mm -hmm. you know it's something that's coming because there are like a couple in los angeles was a really big deal when they opened up and it's like people you know like it so yeah yeah fascinating uh, I've got a kind of a unique one today, uh, a bit of a one-off, and this is a collaboration between Dancing Gnome, who is uh, one of the better breweries in Pittsburgh, really known for their IPAs, and this is in collaboration with something I'm going to talk about a little bit later in the podcast, if you stick around, the 8th, now 8th annual Four Chord Music Festival put on by our dear friend Rishi, an incredible festival this past weekend. Again, talk more about that later, but let's talk about the beer. We have a collaboration with Dancing Gnome and the festival. Uh, They came out with two beers this year, um, and the one I have is called Chorus. The other one is called Verse because that's genius. Why not? It's for a music (laughs) festival. Uh, But this is Chorus, and it's a Belgian-style wit, a wit beer or a vit beer, if you will. And uh, brew with some orange pill, uh, grains of paradise, a little coriander, which is kind of really where the uh, wit beers kind of get their style. It's from it's a very, very old style. Um, it's a little yeasty, and I know that might not sound like an attractive flavor profile, but it is. It, it is. It, it kind of gives it a unique flavor, uh, unique taste, like a little bit of, of kind of that almost autumn spice and almost bready, but yeasty, weedy. Um, I really, really was surprised by how much I enjoyed this beer. I know it's not a style of beer that everybody enjoys, but course is a home run. The festival was a home run again. And shouts to Dancing Gnome for just never doing anything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Dancing Gnome is really good. I mm-hmm. uh, I wish it was, um, I wish it was located closer to me because it's like kind of hard to take the whole family out there. <laughs> and it's a gorgeous tap room, gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where is it? Uh, Sharpsburg. Yeah. Damn, Sharpsburg. Sharpsburg is popping. They got uh, dude. That's hilarious. got a couple out there. Hitchhikers <laughs> out there. Dancing Gnome down the road. Yeah. Sharpsburg's popping. See right. words I never thought people. <laughs> You've been gone for eight years, Dee Dee. Dude, it, yeah, things are changing. I, dude, I know based on the way people talk to me, and they're just like, "Oh yeah, we went out in like Squirrel Hill tonight." I'm like, "You did? <laughs> All right, I guess I've been gone for eight years. Yeah. Nothing says you've been gone for eight years than when people start telling you where they're going out." And I'm like, yeah. "Oh, yes, it changed. <laughs> All right, cool, cool." 
All right. Uh, well, uh, let's get into the main menu, boys. And uh, let's do this pick two first, Dan, since you have a story behind it. Let's go into it. We got a cool pick two with some pairings. Dan, let us know what's up. Yeah, so this actually kind of perfectly comes uh, from a removal from Brews Day. So I went to a brewery. It's a, it was just a few weeks ago now, and they sometimes have these beer pairing dinners. Right, you pay for a ticket, you get in, you get a couple of beers, and you get the food pairings with it. Well, this uh, brewery and the brewery is called Necromancer, and they had a beer and hot dog pairing event. Which, if you know Steel City Dan, that could quite literally not be any more up my alley unless you dusted everything with pumpkin spice. I mean, this was a home run. <laughs> I think I had to have bought the first tickets. There's no doubt about it. So we went to this incredible, incredible event. Um, I'll give you a little bit of overview with it. So there were four courses. There was a beer that paired with each of them. Uh, two of the courses were actually poutine, which, hello, cannot go wrong with poutine either. So we had poutine with the first one. Then we had an o o Oahu dog, had some pineapple, bacon, teriyaki sauce. Then there was a Reykjavik dog with onions, mustard, ketchup, a little remoulade, dessert poutine. It was incredible. And it just had me thinking, like, what are the best food and drink pairings out there? What are the best of the best? And we have six of them here today, and we're only picking two, six of the best. So first one up here is coffee and donuts, because of course. Um, wings and beer, traditionally a good pairing. Uh, cookies and milk, because of course. Uh, fourth one here is pizza and pop. Literally what Pizza Hut made all their money on, those red Coca-Cola plastic cups and pizza, pizza and pop, uh, tacos and margaritas. And then the last one getting a little sophisticated, but cheese and wine. So if you're a wine person, cheese and wine, very popular, very common pairing. I thought about going before anybody puts the, throws the alarm on. I thought about doing mimosas and brunch too vague, too much, not fair. Everybody would pick that. So gentlemen, this pick too, easy, difficult. What are you thinking? I I found it to be easy via you donuts. The, what would you say? Because you hate donuts. Yeah, I found it to be easy <laughs> via the process of elimination. <laughs> um, okay, okay. And so, like, I eliminated donuts pretty quickly. Uh, I eliminated the one with pop because I'm just not a big fan of pop not a big fan of wine. So I eliminated that. I'll tell you the two that I landed on. And then, and then I want to hear from you guys, the two that landed as my finalists in the national championship game <laughs> are beer and wings. And then the margaritas and tacos. Strong. Yeah. See, this was easy for me. I understand why it would be hard for people, but like my, my two absolute favorites are on here. So it's so easy to be like, it's, it'd be harder for me to pick out of the other four. It's mm. wings and beer, which I can't wait to do on Saturday. I was literally told Siobhan, go do whatever you want. I'll have all three kids because there's a huge fight on Saturday. Triple G and Canelo. I will have hot sauce all over my hands. I will not be able to hold a newborn after 8 p.m. on Saturday. So... <laughs> That is how it works. And then the tacos and margaritas. It's like, those are my two favorite pairings in this world. Like I, I am, it's, it, that's why it was so easy for me. The other ones I do like, except for eh, cookies and milk. I don't really need that. But like the other three, I love wine and cheese. I love pizza and pop, especially when you start thinking about Pizza Hut, coffee and donut. I did that this morning. Like mm. I love those, but my two favorites are right there in the middle. And those are the two more, challenging ones i would say especially with wings the idea of like you said you need a lot of napkins there where you're going you got to try to keep one hand clean one hand dirty <laughs> same thing with a taco in the mar can be difficult what it How? can be difficult it can do be difficult. some Go to chrisgatesfitness.com, check out his blog post on how to make your arm stronger, your hand stronger, or something like that. And if it's, it's not about there, the construction, it's about the construction of the taco, not about not about how you how you hold it. Like it's about the construction. Dan, if we're worried about wing and beer, and I, just telling you, it's time to 
<laughs> strengthen those hands up. Get that grip. Get that. Tell grip me you've strong, never had one sir. of those like mini authentic tacos that are like this big, and they just plump every bit of ingredient they can on that. And then when you try to fold that son bitch, it's just falling in pieces. You can't one hand it. That's a two hand <laughs> vessel, right there. <laughs> Anyways, um, this was extremely difficult for me because well, I came up with it. Um, <laughs> they're all wonderful. They're all wonderful things. Uh, I've more, most more recently got into wine, and I've always been a big fan of cheese. And now I realize these things are beautiful together. Absolutely beautiful. Gorgeous, if you will. Uh, pizza and pop, same thing there. I mean, that is childhood right there. Absolutely childhood. And now, like, if you ever go to a movie theater and or even just watch it on TV, like a Coca-Cola commercial, they're not selling Coca-Cola. They're selling Coca-Cola with pizza. And they're, like, trying to make you think. And same with pizza they're trying to like make you think of the other thing like when you have one you have to have the other they're both doing that and yeah that's childhood growing up i haven't touched a pop since college um uh i should say like a virgin pop i should say <laughs> put it that way it's a, it's a phenomenal mixer um cookies and milk i mean that one's hard to turn down but i don't know the last time i did that either but i just <laughs> And it's like any type of cookie goes well with it. It's phenomenal. So as great as those three are, I took those three out. So we're down to coffee and donuts, beer and wings, margs and tacos. My first choice, I'm going coffee and donuts. It's <laughs> Man, is it too good. It's too good. And I think because coffee, the coffee is so, I love coffee. I love it. And um, the hot coffee with a nice pastry. Ooh, that's a beautiful way to start your day. It really is. Or it could be a lovely decaffeinated coffee. <laughs> well, I'm thinking of, we're losing Didi a little bit. A lovely decaf. No, I know coffee. what Didi's thinking. Dan, you didn't need us for this segment. <laughs> no. no, we're going to break it down. Too easy for you guys. This is for me. <laughs> Dan Dan has this segment because Shannon told him to shut up about it. She was like, <laughs> she was like, I can't listen to this. Like, we don't do a podcast together. Like, you go, go do this on Tuesday with your friends. Like, leave me alone. She's like, we're so never doing a hot dog and beer pairing ever again. And so Dan said, fine, I will. And he went to Photoshop. <laughs> and I went and I made this. And it's lovely. Um, love a good coffee and donuts. Or like I said, wintertime. Holiday time, little decaffeinated coffee, pastry at the end of the night. Eat, beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, for my second choice, I think I'm going to go, mm, I'm going to go beer and wings. Taco and Marg is really tough to turn down, but a taco, I can get away with taco and Pacifico or Corona. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. There's more options there. There's, there's nothing that matches up better with wings than beer, quite literally. So those two just hand in hand, a beautiful thing. So coffee and donuts, beer and wings, my two choices. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go uh, tacos and margs. I think that's going to be my number one. Uh, there's, okay. something, there's something about the ability to crush both of those uh, that I'm just a fan of. I, I get a little more full when I do the wings and the beer, but for some reason, I don't, I don't know if it's the tequila, like there's something about that combination where I, I mean, let's go to all you can eat. Cause I, we, that's, that's easy. You make a great point there that a margarita on its own is really good. One of my favorite cocktails. It's like the number one cocktail in America, right? When you pair it with tacos, both go down even smoother and yeah. you go through them way a lot quicker. And then you end up ordering, you're like, why didn't we order another pitcher of margaritas? Like, why did like, you order pictures of margaritas when you're having tacos? You don't order it by the glass. Somehow they both just disappear quicker when they're together. I don't know what it is. Yeah. And it's, it's Mexican independence month. And I mean, month. Yeah. Month. Mexican, oh, yeah. Man, Mexican they know how to do it. <laughs> yeah. Mexican independence month. It starts on Mexican independence day, which is like in the middle of the month. I think it's coming up this weekend, I believe. And then, or this week, and then it goes through and it goes to like a little bit in October. And I don't know why that is. I should probably look that up. But anyways, I know that's how it goes. And I mean, honestly, 
shouts to our Mexican brothers and sisters because they put something together that just works together all the time. Like, it's just, it doesn't matter what Mexican food it is. It can be tacos. It can just be guac. It can just be chips. It can mm-hmm. be anything with margarita. It's like, God, it's amazing. Alpha. And I love jalapeno margaritas right now. Mm. Ugh, oh man the the grilled mm. pineapple margarita mm. at the place that we last went to dinner when we were out oh, to yeah. cbdd is top of the chain top yeah. of the chain it's phenomenal it's phenomenal wow mexican independence month i need to research this i had yes. no idea we have cinco yes. de mayo and everybody goes crazy like we could have a whole month of this it's because it's colliding with Oktoberfest. it's like dope i never thought about that what do we do there that's <laughs> can you imagine that if Breaking we celebrate news. Cinco de Mayo like we do Oktoberfest, like an entire month, like every weekend places are having like tacos and margs, we're doing it wrong, people. We're doing Dude. it wrong. Breaking news. <laughs> Mexican Independence Month. Now celebrated worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, let's uh, talk about this before we get into music. Uh, this guy uh, by the name of at another Cohen. Uh, I don't understand how the following restaurants are still in business. Chili's, Applebee's, Olive Garden, and Red Lobster. (laughs) And this thing I've seen everywhere. Like, I've seen articles written about this thing. Um, People are very angry at this man for asking why these American chains are still in business. How do you feel about this tweet, guys? So I want to point out a couple of things really quickly. Um, first of all, this like dives into the whole thing about what Chris was talking about, where like this man was simply voicing his opinion and <laughs> look at the numbers at the bottom of this tweet. <laughs> it's absolutely absurd that this thing is blown up and he's been lit on fire. Uh, second thing to note, love the avatar of Michael Scott from like the eighties of working at Dunder Mifflin. Just absolutely <laughs> phenomenal you hear stories about uh thunder mifflin in the (laughs) 80s man did they move paper (laughs) uh third thing i want to point out is that when something like this goes viral you don't necessarily see the tweet first and for me i saw olive garden trending and i like heavily and i thought (laughs) oh no what's happening (laughs) just like when you see a celebrity and you think Did this person die? I'm like, what happened at Olive Garden now? Tell me they're still okay. And then I see this and I'm like, oh, whole different topic. We're okay. We're safe. So uh, before we dive into the tweet itself, I just wanted to point those, those couple things out. I'm, I, I think I'm, I guess one of the people who uh, aren't a fan of this tweet because I have said, I think I've said this on this podcast before. I think the outrage or the hate directed at these chain restaurants is largely overblown. And I think for the most part, they actually have pretty good food. I think the same thing. Like I get Olive Garden takeout like at least once every couple months. Like I love Olive Garden over here. And I have no beef with chilies or Red Lobster. Applebee's, not my favorite. But there's no, the weird thing about this is like, I don't understand how they're still in business. Where do you live, sir? <laughs> <laughs> like, how do you not understand that they're in business? Like, I'm sure you have some favorite restaurant in your neighborhood or whatever, but there's only one of those. <laughs> like, there's a million of these. I don't, everywhere in the country. I don't, I just, this, tweet i get why people are angry at it because it just is stupid it's like what do you mean you don't understand and and that's the thing about a lot of these businesses if you've ever been to like a very small rural town anywhere they have at least two of these they have nothing else they don't have a mall they don't the nearest home depot is like 35 miles away (laughs) they have two of these that's guaranteed they they put them in those locations everywhere and because they, you know, they're not going to like, it's not an Applebee's on every quarter in Los Angeles because like there's real food in Los Angeles. Like it's, they don't need to be there though, because they're in every other small town across the country. Um, 
and I guess it plays into the whole like consistency thing, right? It's why Starbucks does so well is because you can literally go into the same Applebee's, Chili's, Olive Garden, Red Lobster, anywhere in the country, get the same thing for roughly the same price. It's going to turn out the same way. And one of the reasons I'm not permitted to go to these restaurants currently is because what I've been told, because I love me some Olive Garden. I know it's so bad for you, but every once in a while, like DDU, every couple of months, I just need me some some good Olive Garden breadsticks, some of that completely full of just no nutrients and watered down salad <laughs> um, and a bowl of salt that they call pasta is so good. And we can't go there because I've been told that when we have children, this is where we're going to have to go because we can afford this and we know what's on the menu and that kids can eat at these places. <laughs> and it was a rather eye-opening moment to me going like, yeah, we're not going to take our kids to these like nicer, uh, not fancy, but nicer restaurants, you know, Thai restaurants. We're not taking our kids to a Thai restaurant and stuff like that. This is, we know what, we know what they have. Chicken fingers available at all of them, you know, French fries <laughs> available at all of them. The kids will be happy. We won't be spending $85 in food for a family of four. So that I think is why these restaurants are still in business. That, Maybe the two of you could speak on that better since you actually have families like, oh, I can I mean, understand that makes, why the dead lobster is still around. That makes sense. <laughs> I, um, I think like the, the earlier point was the, like that's the, I, I, the amount of towns in the United States where like the Applebee's bar is like the place, the, it's the bar <laughs> is like <laughs> way more than, I don't know, any other restaurant that is out there. Like you may have some uh, like gourmet meatball place you like to go to, but like, sorry, they don't have that in Colport, Pennsylvania, but they have an Applebee's <laughs> and that's where right. people go. And, but like in beyond that, like I said, I still think like the food largely to what you guys said, like, it's pretty good. You know what you're going to get at every single place that you go to. So I, I have, I have no problem with these places. There's an Applebee's outside of my eye doctor, uh, <laughs> over here in Pittsburgh. And no matter what time of day and no matter what day of the week I go to get my eyes checked, uh, each year, holy shit. Is there a lot of people at that Applebee's? Yeah. That's the thing. It's just those places are just you see them, whether it doesn't matter where you are. Like there's an there are there's an olive garden in Times Square. Like there's <laughs> I like, did not know that. <laughs> yes, there's an olive garden in Times Square. There might be a red lobster there too, but like there are chain restaurants in Times Square. So there are people going to New York City and are like, oh, this city is amazing. But whoo. That's home to me. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's why these places exist is because when you are in some place that may have food that you don't know what you're going to get, like, and you are seeing all the sites and doing all the culture, you want to, at the end of the day, know you're about to spend money on something that you like to eat. And that's why these restaurants exist. That's why they're there. What blows my mind is people that wait for these to get into these restaurants like oh i'm sorry the wait's about an hour and 15 minutes okay that's fine we'll wait on this one of these benches outside like that's insane to me <laughs> that's absolutely insane go somewhere else waiting unless there you're in is small nowhere town. else yeah if you're in those small towns where this is all you have i guess this is what this is all you have go to the home depot maybe take a trip out there and take the get the chilies on the way back something like that but now that's one that's that's one question I will ask. Are you both, are you either of you surprised that Chili's and Applebee's are both still around? They're the closest of the two. They're not the same, but they offer a lot of the same. I feel like TGI Fridays is like the same as those two as well. Mm. Like I feel like there's not a huge difference. So yeah, it is interesting that they're, but then there's like, they all claim to be the best at baby back ribs and none of them are. <laughs> <laughs> But then like you look at other types of restaurants, like there's McDonald's, Burger King, and Wendy's everywhere too. So yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And we all know why they're still in business. This guy's just a dummy. Shouts to him for being a dummy. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, this was a lot of fun to talk about. Now let's get into music. Chris, what are you listening to, man? Um, well, I've been searching for motivation to uh, get energized get back into the gym 
and train, which has been a lot of fun, uh, might I say. But I've gone back to a couple of albums that I've put on uh, the playlist before um, because they're just a couple of my favorites that I've found this year. Um, and there are a couple of candidates, early candidates for probably brunchies at the end of the year. Ooh, um, the ooh. first one I've gone to is uh, from a band called With the Punches, their album Discontent. Their, the opening song is called Stoneham Blues. And like, th- this is a band that went away for five, six, seven years. They come back with this album. The amount of energy packed into the first five seconds of this song is just unbelievable. And uh, it really... <laughs> that along with 220 milligrams of caffeine before I started my workout really got me going. So Ooh. shout out to with the punches and uh, <laughs> we'll put, put that song on the playlist this week in uh, their honor. Beautiful. Dan, what do you listen to? Um, so I had a song that I've been meaning to put in the playlist for a couple weeks now. It's been out for a few weeks, most importantly, because it's got, my girl on it, Benny. Benny teamed up with uh, a singer by the name of Johnny Orlando, who sounds like a wrestler, by the way. Here comes Johnny Orlando! (laughs) Um, But Johnny Orlando and Benny came out with a song called Fun Out of It. Um, It's very cool, very interesting sound. It's almost like, it's almost like there's a chill, it's a chill vibe, chill sound, but it's still a little upbeat. There's still a little bit of movement to it and great vocals, honestly, from both of them i'd never heard of johnny orlando before but uh naturally a big fan of benny's so anytime i see her on i want to check her out so uh yeah give this one a try fun out of it by johnny orlando and benny johnny orlando hugely popular on the internet is johnny orlando Uh, see that's why i don't we don't make me go down this road again (laughs) very popular i bet his his tickets are 65 dollars because of it (laughs) Dan. He's half the listeners is Benny, by the way. Old man Dan. He's not happy. (laughs) There he goes. Um, My guy, Breland, put out his debut album last week, and it is so good, and I am so happy for him, and I want to put Thick on the playlist. This is a jam. Thick on the playlist. How's it spelled? Oh, the same way Thick is spelled. Couple C's. No K. Just 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 T H I C K. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I was hoping for a couple C's. I thought no. it was a few. I thought it was gonna be C's. Yeah. Not a bunch of C's. I know Beyonce spells it with a Q on her album, so just she's allowed. Yeah, Eek. she's allowed. Eek. <laughs> <laughs> uh that's awesome. I haven't heard from Breland in a while. That's gonna be fun. Um another one uh from this past year, an album, an album that's not from this past year, but I found this past year. Is from a band called Honey Creek. Their album, A Whole Year in Transit. Honey Creek is from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which I am, as we know, a native son. Um, I don't know what song I'm going to put on. It's This this album is my leading candidate for album of the year, uh, especially in uh, the pop punk genre. But um, I'll toss something on from this one because it has also combined with caffeine to be quite helpful. <laughs> um second one for me is from ash now you might remember her name she had a a song that became popular moral of the story i think that was last year a little over a year ago maybe and um she's released a few new songs so far this year and her latest one called emotional is like much more upbeat than any of the ones you might be familiar with from her music uh it guitar driven like a dancey chorus and has like all kind of different genre elements in it that you can try to kind of kind of pick up uh throughout the song so it's i really like the sound of it um so the song's called emotional from ash sweet next one i got here is uh an artist name i i don't know how to say his name but i think it's uh rima I'm not sure, but R-E-M-A and Selena Gomez got a song called Calm Down. And this song is really good. And um, Selena sounds good on it, but uh, really I would enjoy a version without her on it because this song's great. Um, Yeah. So, but anyways, check out the song. It's good. Calm down. Not many things you can say that you'd enjoy a version without Selena Gomez on. So (laughs) I'm very fascinated to listen. (laughs) 
Uh, you. Oh, he muted you, himself. You're muted. Told a funny joke too. Always mute yourself. What you guys you are never gonna know the joke. I'll just. Laugh. <laughs> Um, my last one is from a band called Next Attempt. This actually is a new song. Here's to all my friends. This band is um, a, a tad heavier than those that I normally recommend. Still in that genre, that pop punk genre, uh, but they're going to kind of kick you in the teeth with a little bit of their uh, musicianship, musicianship uh, which uh, I don't know, is fun. I like a change of pace every once in a while. And um, yeah, see what you guys think. Very cool. Uh, I mentioned with the beer that I shared with you both, the Four Chord Music Festival, and uh, again, put on by our incredible friend, uh, Rishi, and it's eighth year, and this thing keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And, you know, this year it was twice as long, two days, twice as many bands. It was stacked um, and amazing headliners like Bad Religion, and the Descendants, Jimmy World, and all time low closed out the show with another absolutely incredible performance. One, honestly, if you haven't seen them live and you, and you like that style of music, you need to go see all time low live. They're incredible. Every time I've seen them. Um, so they closed out the festival Saturday night. And so I'm going to put on one of their uh, older songs actually from one of my favorite albums of theirs is actually from 2015 uh, future hearts. And the song is called Old Scars, Future Hearts. It closes out the album. I think it's a pretty underrated song, but they, these guys have just been so good. And really, they've stayed true to themselves. They've danced a little bit outside the line, um, which is fine, but they still um, are, are just an incredible band, uh, really great live, and an all-around incredible festival. So all-time low to close it out, Old Scars, Future Hearts. All right. Uh, you know what I was about to do? Uh, absolutely repeat a song because uh, Bitch Back by Olivia O'Brien is amazing. Um, <laughs> Let's that go. That song is so good. I think it's already been on there twice. All right. It's actually already repeated. So <laughs> That song is so goddamn catchy and so good and just so like, I can remember moments with both of you where I'm like, ah, got my bitch back. You know? <laughs> So I, it's just, that is like the most relatable song in the world. It's like when your friend is out of a relationship, you're like, finally, I got my bitch back. Let's <laughs> go. I fucking love that song. It's such a good song. But um, I want to put a weird song on here. Uh, Black Star Kids and Beba Doobie. And this song is called Cyber Kiss to You. And it mm -hmm. is weird. Yeah. I don't, it is weird. This song is, and I don't know if I hate it or like it or love it or what, but it's weird. And um, yeah, check it out. Anything you've heard of Viva Doobie before this song, don't expect that on this song because it's just weird. The whole song is weird. Yeah. <laughs> so. And that's why I didn't put it on the playlist because I thought that very thing. I'm like, this isn't Viva Doobie. What's going on no. here? They have us fooled. Um, it's just but weird. it's weird yep it's <laughs> well <just> said weird. <laughs> oh it's just weird well that is the sounds of brunch playlist make sure you check it out on spotify updated every friday or whenever me and chris get the songs to dan is whenever he updates it uh all right uh before we go one thing before uh the bishop sycamore game of the <laughs> week alabama versus university of louisiana monroe uh, Why are they playing this game? Alabama is a 49 point favorite in this football game. They play this game every year, either in September or November. And why do they do this? Why is it happening? It's the Bishop Sycamore game of the week. The only contender for that. Congratulations. That that's a ridiculous line. Ridiculous. Wow. <laughs> Bishop Sycamore game of the week. Chris, you're up next. You're up next for Bishop Sycamore game of the week. So be looking at your, your week four slate of games. Yeah. Okay. All right. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> be looking at your week four slate of games. Uh, yeah. All right. Any final thoughts, guys, on the brunch breakdown before we run out? Um, I think more people should make non-alcoholic craft beer because this is delicious. 
And I think if you really want to have a good time, apparently all you need to do is go to your local Applebee's bar and step up and prep up because that's where everybody's hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> it's the French breakdown. We're out.